All right, uh, math students at uh, Lackawanna. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to be there with you tonight. I'll be there tomorrow night, though. Uh, I do want to go over a couple of things. I'm going to try to make this relatively short and give you the bulk of the uh, material to work on on your own. Uh, but uh, we're, as you know, we're heading you know, the last uh, home stretch of uh, the math class. So what I'd like to do is go over some topics tonight, uh, give you an assignment uh, to look at and do for next week, and. Uh, also, next week, I'd like to have a little quiz on what we talk about with the gas laws. And I'll give you some problems in the book to look at. And the book, uh, a lot of what your final exam is going to be based upon is going to be um, on pages 141 through 143. And let me see where else here. The self-test at the... Uh, back of the chapter on page 144, so that's going to be that's going to be quite a bit of it. So we have to get through those things over the next couple of weeks, so it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so the things I want to talk about now, I want to go back and talk about these gas laws. Uh, we're going to talk about them quite a bit in physics, but your purpose is just to sort of manipulate them so that you can solve for different quantities. I do want to mention when I do talk about gas laws, I want to mention something about temperature which I, I mentioned last week, uh, but we want to go ahead and talk about temperature. Uh, I do want to mention what gauge pressure is. Uh, I want to do some problems where uh, you have people working together. Uh, you know, Chris can paint a fence in two hours and, uh, you know, Dante can paint a fence in three hours. If they work together, how, how, uh, quickly will they be able to uh, paint the whole fence what, you know, what time what length of time would they need those types of problems so um so we'll talk about those things and then also uh ohm's law um, uh, and there's this whole section in the book on ohm's law and resistors uh resistors in parallel and series we're going to go through that and uh that's about it and then i'll have some stuff for you to work on uh this working together problem i'm going to send you a worksheet on that and the rest will be from the book Okay, so let's get started. So, the gas laws. These are either going to be direct proportions or inverse proportions. Now, we learned that you could have pressure, for example, would be inversely proportional to volume. And we said we can make this into an equation uh, by saying P is equal to some constant over V. And I told you that if I want to multiply both sides by V, I would just have this constant. Volume times pressure is equal to a constant. So if, if I have a gas and uh, I'm, holding my, I'm holding my temperature constant, and I'm not adding any gas or taking any gas away. I'm only playing with pressure and volume, and that's all I'm doing. Well, then we could say that uh, the volume under condition one times the pressure under condition one is equal to the volume at condition two times the pressure at condition two. And we call this expression Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law just said, hey, volume times pressure is always a constant. Now, if I look like I'm looking around frantically, I'm, I'm actually looking for something to demonstrate that. But anyway, not a big deal if I can't find it. We're going to be doing an experiment in physics uh, on Boyle's Law uh, next week. So and when we spend time on uh, gas laws. So that was one equation. Let me write it up here. So we're going to go through, have you... look at a variety of them. I like to write the P first. It's the way I learned it. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Um, we learned also that things like pressure were directly proportional to temperature. So if we can make that into an equation and say, well, P is equal to K times T, 
well, we can solve this once again for, for this constant. Now, when we only deal with pressure and temperature, we have to say that uh, volume is held constant and the amount of gas is held constant. Uh, when we talk about the amount of gas, I'm going to have to introduce an idea called the mole or the mole idea of gas uh, of, of gas particles. But that's uh, that's for another time. That'd be tomorrow in physics. So I'm going to divide both sides by T, and I've got P over T is equal to K, and of course we could say P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2, and we could use this to get uh, new pressures if we change temperatures. Now, these temperatures, as I mentioned, have to be in Kelvin. Kelvin. And the way we get to Kelvin temperature, it's our Celsius temperature plus 273. That's equal to Kelvin. Okay. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute. Um, what happens if I have a Fahrenheit temperature? Well, let me give you a couple of equations here to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit. Your Fahrenheit temperature is equal to 9 fifths, 9 over 5 degrees C plus 32. So if you are given a Celsius temperature, you can easily solve for the Fahrenheit temperature. Now, your algebra should help you to go ahead and solve this the other way around. If I'm given a Fahrenheit temperature, can I get the Celsius temperature? Well, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> my my uh, order of operations, I kind of have to reverse it here since I'm solving for the other variable. So it's degree F minus 32, that whole thing in parentheses, times 5 over 9. That's going to be my degrees Celsius. That's it. So if you're given a Celsius temperature, you can solve for Fahrenheit. If you're given a Fahrenheit temperature, you can solve for Celsius. Let's practice on one of those. Body temperature, human body temperature is about 98.6 degrees C. Or no, no 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if it was 98.6 degrees C, your blood would be boiling. So that's... Uh, that's uh, your temperature, body temperature, if you don't have COVID, in degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and change it to degrees C. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say 98.6 to minus 32. And I'm going to multiply that by 5 over 9, that whole quantity. And let me see, 30, 92, it's going to be 6... D6.6 .6. and you get 37 degrees C is your body temperature in Celsius, 37 degrees C. So that's that's the way you use that formula. Now let's say we have a degree C, we want to get a Fahrenheit. Okay? And how about I tell you that uh, Water boils at 100 degrees C, which it does under atmospheric uh, conditions. Water boils at 100. What's the Fahrenheit temperature? Well, you know the Fahrenheit temperature is 212 degrees C, uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, I'm a little off kilter today. So let's go ahead and put the numbers in here. 100 degrees C, 100 times 9 fifths. And I'm going to add 32, that's 180, shouldn't have used a calculator for that, uh, plus 32, and you get 212. So for 100 degrees C, that equals 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, I think there are a couple problems in the book where you have to go back and forth and convert between one uh, temperature and another. The important thing is, whenever you're using temperature, in the ideal gas laws, or the gas laws rather, you need um, you need that Kelvin. So we have uh, P1 over T1 is P2 over T2, and we have another relationship, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So volume 
and temperature are directly proportional. So your textbook goes in and does a couple of different problems. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and make sure that, that we can do one. So I have a problem right here. It says, uh, you probably won't be able to read it. Get a tight shot of that. I'll read it to you. Matter of fact, I'll send it to you. It says, uh, some students believe that teachers are full of hot air. If I, if I inhale 2.2 liters of gas at a temperature of 18 degrees C and it heats to a temperature of 38 degrees C in my lungs, what is the new volume of the gas? Well, we're looking for volume, right? And we got temperature. So which one are we going to use? We're not going to use that because we don't care about pressure. That one has temperature, but we don't care about pressure. So what we're going to use is this one right here. This is Charles' law, by the way. And this one, I think, is called Gilles-Sac law. I don't care about the names. You know, that's you're never going to be asked those names when you're out doing some gas problems. But we do need this equation, so I'm going to rewrite it. And uh, you're given some information. I'm inhaling 2.2 liters of gas. 2.2 liters, that's V1. And T1 is 18 degrees C. Now, we don't want degrees C. We want Kelvin, right? So you have to add 273 to that. And that works out to, what, 281? 273 plus 18, 291? 291. 291 Kelvin. Okay, now V2. We don't know V2, but we know T2. T2 is 38 degrees. Or 311 Kelvin. Okay, so let's plug and chug. We have V1. 2.2 liters over 291 Kelvin is equal to <coughs> uh, V2, which we don't know, over 311 Kelvin. So go ahead and solve it. Multiply both sides by 311. That's going to cancel. And let's see how big my lungs get here. 311 divided by 291 multiplied by 2.2. So 2.4. V2, round it, 2.35, call it 2.4 liters. So you can see the gas expands a little bit in volume, not a tremendous amount uh, of, of change there. All right, now what happens though Let's say I pose a problem like this. Let's, let's do one with pressure. Let's do one with pressure. And we'll say that my, um, my uh, car tires have a pressure of 44, uh, 44 PSI. And a temperature, okay, that's, v, uh, that's P1. And T1 is, let's say it's 20 degrees C. All right. And I jump in and I start my car and I notice that the pressure light's on uh, and the pressure light comes on and tells me uh, that I have to check my tire pressure because it got cold outside. Well, I, uh, I read 38 PSI when I change or when I check the tire pressure. And this, by the way, is the gauge pressure. Not that it matters, but the gauge pressure is already calibrated to have zero really be 14.7 pounds per square inch. Uh, that that uh, Because atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch. So these pressures you're reading off your tire gauge are gauge pressures or 44 PSI above the, uh, um, the 14.7 PSI. Anyway, I want to know what temperature it is outside. 
in degree C. Well, before we can do anything here, we have to change that to Kelvin. Uh, add 273, that's 293 Kelvin. And now let's set it up. 44 PSI. And you're saying, hey, Koch, you're mixing, you're mixing uh, imperial units with metric units. It doesn't matter for these problems as long as on both sides of the equation we're using the same units. And our temperature in the denominator either has to be in Kelvin or Rankine. Rankine is the, uh, the non-metric version, the imperial version of absolute temperature. But we can, we can mix and match as long as we're the same on both sides. So 44 PSI divided by 293 Kelvin, and that's going to equal 38 PSI over T2. Now I know that you guys have a lot of trouble solving for, not, not all of you, but some of you have trouble solving for a variable if it's in the denominator. So follow along. Let's divide this through. Let's divide this through and then figure out what we're going to do with that. So 44 divided by 293 is 0 0.1 one five O and the units happen to be PSI over Kelvin and that's equal to 38 PSI over T2. Now if I have a number here and, and a variable in the denominator all I have to do is switch those two around. Take the T2 multiply it up here on both sides. Well, that gets rid of the T2. And then we'll divide both sides by 0 0.150. Uh, and the units are PSI over Kelvin. So the PSIs are going to cancel, and the Kelvin will come up to the top. Hopefully you can see that. It's 0 0.150. So let's go ahead and... and uh, <coughs> divide and that is 253 Kelvin 253 Kelvin now what is that in Celsius well subtract 273 from that and you get what minus 20 degrees C there's my temperature minus 20 so that should make some sense that's a case where you'd have to solve for something in the denominator. So when you're looking through your book, uh, one of the things on page uh, 135, I'd like you definitely to take a look at, uh, let's see here, question number eight for sure. And uh, I'll give you a couple more. I'll give you, I'll send you a couple more questions to look at, but definitely question number eight, that's just converting a gauge pressure to absolute pressure. Um, all you have to do then is just uh, add to 14.7 uh, to it. Uh, so anyway, pretty straightforward. I'll send you some problems to work on, about a half dozen of these or so. The important part is manipulating the equations around to get that quantity that you want. That's important. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And also uh, converting back and forth between Fahrenheit and Celsius and Kelvin. All right. So that's, those will be some problems for you to work on. Like I said, we'll, we'll uh, look at uh, about a half dozen of those problems. There is another version of a gas law equation, which we're not going to cover in math class which we will cover in uh, physics class, and that's called the ideal gas equation, but we'll do that tomorrow uh, and not, not tonight. Okay, next type of problem, working together problems. Now this could be, this could be uh, one of two type of problems. You could have a problem where, you know, and say, well, you know, uh, Joe takes three hours to dig a 10 by 10 foot hole. And uh, yeah. Elizabeth takes two hours 